Tosh Delek and welcome to Tibet This Week, a weekly news edition on Tibet, His Holiness the Dalai Lama and Central Tibetan Administration. Let's have a look at today's headlines. His Holiness the Dalai Lama confers teaching on Chandrakirti's entering the middle way. Sikyong Pembasri meets Tibetans living in Dharamshala. Central what Tibetan Administration practice. celebrates 63rd Tibetan men Democracy men Day. Have the same. Swedish parliamentary delegation expresses solidarity with Tibetans. Deputy Speaker attends IPAC Prague Summit 2023. Australian Labour Party adopts resolution condemning erosion of rights and freedom in Tibet. Australian Senator Rice raises concern over human rights issues in Tibet. India's core group for Tibetan cause attends Tibetan Democracy Day celebration. 21st North American Tibetan Association's conference held in Toronto. Parliamentary delegation partakes in 2023 Open Government Partnership Summit in Estonia. Delegation of U.S. Congressional Executive Commission on China visit Office of Tibet, Taiwan. On Tuesday this week, His Holiness the Dalai Lama continued last year's teaching on Chandrakirti's entering the middle way in conjunction with the auto commentary for two days at the request of a group of Southeast Asians at the main Tibetan temple. On Tuesday this week, Sikyong Pimpatsring began his assessment tour in Dharamshala. Sikyong visited schools, monasteries and institutions located in and around Maklod Ganj, Kanjin Kishong, Nubulinga, Chamunda and Gobalpur. Sikyong visited Tibetan Institute of Performing Arts, Miwen Tsuglan Pedu School, Upper and Lower Tibetan Children's Village School, and Sharap Gadze Lobling, TCB Kopalpur, Sara College for Higher Tibetan Studies, Domaling Naniri, Lundrup Chimi Gadze Ling Monastery, Chonang Monastery, Nyingdob Ling, Meizi Kang, Nubulinga Institution, Chamunda based Tibetan retailers community, and the Tibetan community in Maklod Ganj to evaluate the status and administration of the schools, institutions, and members of the community. While talking to the students, Sikyong stressed on being a responsible Tibetan and appraised the staff about Kashak's determination to establish cohesion among Tibetan schools that currently have variations in some spectrums of administration. Addressing the challenges of the dwindling Tibetan community in India due to factors including falling natality, a decrease in Tibetans coming from Tibet, and an increase in migration of Tibetans abroad, Sikyong emphasized the sustenance of Tibetan settlements through Kashak's housing and land allotment project. This project aspires to provide land or houses in Tibetan settlements that can accommodate those who have not been facilitated in the Tibetan refugee settlements. On September 2nd, the Central Tibetan Administration celebrated the 63rd Tibetan Democracy Day at Tsuglakang in Dharamshala with the gracious presence of a group of Swedish parliamentary delegation led by Honorable Margareta Elizabeth Satterfeld, a member of Swedish Parliament from the Moderate Party, and the representatives of distinguished international donor organizations who were part of CTA Donor Conference. Expressing her honor of being part of the celebration, Chief Guest MP Margareta Elizabeth Satterfield lauded the CTA's middle way approach policy after Speaker Kempo Sunam Tempel and Sikyong Pempatsring read the statements of the Tibetan Parliament in Exile and Kashak respectively. This year there was no cultural performance on the occasion to express solidarity with the government and people of Himachal Pradesh for the colossal loss caused by incessant rain. A day's salary of all the CTA staff has been contributed to the Chief Minister's Relief Fund to show support and gratitude to the Himachal government and people. On the afternoon of the Tibetan Democracy Day, the group of Swedish parliamentary delegation led by Honorable Margareta Elizabeth Sederfeld led a press conference to express their support for the Tibetan people. The visiting delegation consisted of Honorable MPs Margareta Elizabeth Satterfeld, accompanied by other MPs from the Moderate Party, Sweden Democrats Party, the Christian Democrats Party, the Green Party and Swedish Tibet Committee. The delegation were accompanied by Representative Sonam Tsiring Farsi and Secretary Lopsang Chujun Samten from the Office of Tibet, London. 
MB Margaret Elizabeth Satterfield spoke about her positive meeting with His Holiness the Dalai Lama and stressed on the importance of his message advocating for peace. She lauded the exiled Tibetan democracy. The Swedish Parliament delegation visited the Tibetan Parliament in exile earlier on Monday this week. The delegates were taken on a tour of Parliament Hall and were briefed on the functioning, composition and structure of the Tibetan Parliament in exile by the Speaker. Speaker Kimbo Sunam Timbil, along with members of the Standing Committee and members of the Rules and Regulation Review Committee had a very productive meeting discussing the issue of Tibet with the Swedish delegation. The Speaker further briefed the visiting Swedish delegation on the unicameral system of the TPIE with 45 members, its biannual parliament sessions and its different committees. The delegation are introduced on the objectives of International Network of Parliamentarians on Tibet, a platform for the international lawmakers to make their contribution toward the resolution of the Sino-Tibetan conflict and thereby urge the MPs to join the platform. Deputy Speaker Thomas Rintekang of the Tibetan Parliament in Exile attended the third Interparliamentary Alliance on China, IPAC, Prague Summit 2023, held from 1st to 2nd September. Deputy Speaker gave a presentation on the most pressing issue faced by Tibetans inside Tibet and also on the environmental challenges and threat the Chinese government is posing in Tibet. During the summit, Deputy Speaker Tekang met with three Czech Parliamentary Tibet Interest Group Senator Primsi Rabas, the chair of the Czech Parliament Tibet Group, Hayato Joseph Okamura, a member of the Chamber of Deputies, Senator Catherine Jackis, the secretary of Czech Parliamentary Tibet Support Group. The focus of the summit was on six themes related to China-Taiwan, renewable dependency, transnational repression, Hong Kong, Belt and Road, and human rights. The summit was hosted at the Czech Chamber of Deputies and Senate buildings in Prague, Czech Republic, and was attended by 50 legislatures from 30 countries. The major political parties in Australia, the Australia Labour Party during its 49th National Conference held from 17 to 19 August at Brisbane, unanimously adopted a resolution condemning erosion of rights and freedom inside Tibet. MB Julian Hill of ALP has introduced this resolution that showed deep concern over reports of the erosion of educational, religious, cultural and linguistic rights and freedoms in Tibet. Earlier last week, the Indo-Tibet Coordinator Office delegation paid a courtesy visit to former Tibetan cabinet member Gelu Thundup, the elder brother of His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama, at his residence in Kalimpong. The delegation also met with P.T. Bhutia, longtime Tibet supporter and president of India-Tibet Friendship Society, Kalimpong. India-Tibet Coordination Office, ITCO, in collaboration with India-Tibet Friendship Society, Kalimpong, organized a public meeting at Manilagang, Kalimpong. The meeting resulted in the formation of a five-member committee to oversee and facilitate the election of the Regional Working Committee of the ITFS Kalimpong within 15 days. Core Group for Tibetan Cause India delegation comprising of National Core Governor Sri Surender Kumar, Regional Governor Sri Somya Deep Datta, ITCO Coordinator Thupdin Rinzin, and Deputy Coordinator Tindi Jordan on the last leg of their tour participated in the 63rd anniversary of Tibetan Democracy Day celebrations in Gangtok, Sikkim. The delegation was also joined by CGTC Regional Governor Sri Pemo Wangta Bhutia, who is based in Gangtok. Honorable Sri Sonam Lama, the State Minister for Ecclesiastical, Rural Development and the Cooperation Departments of the Government of Sikkim, graced the occasion as the chief guest. Special guests included MLA Sri Y.T. Lepcha, Tibetan Parliamentary Yuju Agutsang and others. The event garnered significant attendance from both the Tibetan and local communities with notable representation from Tibet support group such as Bharat Tibet Sayok Manch. The delegation concluded their week-long tour of North Bengal and Sikkim aimed at strengthening and reinvigorating the Tibet support groups while promoting Tibet awareness in Salugara, Darjeeling, Kalimpong and Gangtok. On Monday this week, Senator Janet Rice, a long-standing Tibet supporter and advocate who is also the co-chair of the Australian All-Party Parliamentary Group Tibet, 
raised concern over the deteriorating human rights situation in Tibet as well as the matter concerning the reincarnation of His Holiness the Dalai Lama on the occasion of the 12th Tibet Lobby Day marked by cross-parliamentary group supporting Tibetan freedom. During a question session at the Senate, Senator Rice questioned the Minister for Foreign Affairs, Penny Wong, about the measures she intends to take in her conversations with representatives of the Chinese government to ensure that the traditional religious practices such as selection, education and veneration of Tibetan Buddhist religious leaders are protected in Tibet and to ensure that the Chinese government does not have the role in the selection of the next Dalai Lama. MP Senator Wong, in her response, expressed concern over the erosion of rights and freedom in Tibet, particularly the assimilation of Tibetan children into colonial boarding schools, the detention of Tibetans for peaceful expression of political views and the suppression of Tibetan religious expression. Senator Rice also asked Minister Wong about forced labor in Tibet and whether Australia would ban the imports of goods produced by forced labor to which Foreign Minister Wong said the Australian government, through its Modern Slavery Act, has conducted a review based on which she informed the government will formulate its response. Tibet Lobby Day is an annual event organized by the Australia Tibet Council in collaboration with the Tibetan community in Australia, where Tibetans and Tibet supporters come together in Canberra to meet with Australian parliaments to talk about different issues concerning Tibet. The Canadian Tibetan Association of Toronto, in collaboration with the Office of Tibet, Washington, D.C., held the 21st North American Tibetan Association's Conference at Kangzhong Chudeling in Toronto from 2nd to 4th September. Around 40 participants from 19 different Tibetan associations in North America attended the conference, along with Representative Namgil Chudup and Tibetan liaison officer Kunga Tashi from the Office of Tibet, Washington, North American Tibetan Parliament, Tenzi Jingme, President of the International Campaign for Tibet, Tenchu Gyatso, Chair of Canada Tibet Committee, Sambil Halungpa, with Executive Director, Sharap Tarjin, and President of the Tibet Fund, Bob Angerson. Representative Namge Chudup chaired the conference. During the three days of the conference, the participants deliberated on strategizing Tibet advocacy, preserving Tibetan language and culture, creating awareness amongst Tibetans about the significance of His Holiness the 14 Dalai Lama's four Nobel commitments, mounting up the young Tibetans' engagements in Tibetan freedom struggle and issues concerning Tibetan Chartel, Green Book Payment. On the final day, Dr. Gyalo, a Tibetan activist and educational sociologist, addressed the participants on China's education policies that endanger the Tibetan language and how Tibetans in diaspora can take on this concerning challenge. The parliamentary delegation consisting of MPs Geshe Melam Tarjin, Lagere Namge Doga, Sanet Saun Thindup Tashi, and Purpa Doji Gyaldong took part in this year's Open Government Partnership Summit hosted by Estonian government in its capital, Tallinn. The meeting featured talks on Open Parliament e-network with representatives from Taiwan and Morocco speaking on the accountability in parliamentarians and parliament in anti-corruption policy making respectively. Parliament Lagiri Namge Doga spoke on the Chinese government's practice of colonial style boarding school in Tibet, which aims to destroy the very identity of the Tibetans. Members of the parliamentary delegation also had the opportunity to interact with other participants during the sidelines of the summit and briefed them on the current critical situation inside of Tibet and on the functioning of the Central Tibetan Administration. The summit was attended by more than 2,000 participants from across the world parliament. Another parliamentary delegation consisting of MPs Dawat Sering, Yishidoma and Temba Yarpel commenced their Tibet advocacy in Ladakh by calling on Sri Santosh Sukhdev, District Magistrate, Le Ladakh, on Wednesday this week. Giving a brief account of the alarming situation inside Tibet, the members of the parliament urged the District Magistrate to continue looking after the welfare of the Tibetans residing in Ladakh. A four-member delegation of the U.S. Congressional Executive Commission on China visited the Office of Tibet in Taiwan on Wednesday this week. The delegation consisting of Piero A. Toza, Matt Scurry, Scott E. Phillips, 
and Anna Scott Bell met with Representative Kesan Gezebawa to discuss matters concerning the Tibet cause and the current situation in Tibet under the hardline policies being implemented by the Xi government to annihilate Tibetan cultural and national identity. The delegation expressed their solidarity for Tibet and conveyed their admiration for His Holiness the Dalai Lama's vision and contributions to the preservation of Tibetan language, religion and culture. They assured the continued support of the U.S. to the aspirations of His Holiness the Dalai Lama and the Tibetans. That is all the news for this week's edition of Tibet This Week. Thank you for watching Tibet TV.